From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Jake Kessler returning your call, Johnny. I just got back here to my office. You've been at the hospital? Yes, and it looks like hard luck Dennis may pull through. Has he been able to talk? He may never be able to. That bullet went right through his neck. Anyhow, he's still unconscious. He's the key to the whole case, Jake. So phone me here as soon as he can be talked to. Meantime? Meantime, I'm going to try to snag me some of these Lake Mojave bass. Lucky dog. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Catherine Wash on the Colorado River, to the Greater Southwest Insurance and Liability Company, Kingman, Arizona office. Following is a report of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Midas Touch matter. <laughs> Item eight, six dollars twenty cents gas for the rental car that I drove down here to the Lake Mojave Resort in the Colorado River, just above Davis Dam. And what a place. Modern, comfortable cabin within spitting distance of the lake itself. Good restaurant, tackle shop, dock. In fact, everything to make a fisherman happy and to help him fight it out with the lunker bass that inhabit the 60-mile-long lake. But much as I wanted to fish, I had other things to do. First, I wanted a good look at the Midas Touch mine. On the advice of the manager, Ham Pratt, I took along Buster Favor, general factotum of the resort. I liked Buster immediately, short, stocky, cheerful, and with keen eyes that took in everything that went on about him. Little side road to the left, Johnny. Okay. So old hard luck Dennis got shot up, huh? Yeah, apparently because he knew too much. You see, when that cave-in occurred at the Midas Touch and killed the Haskell brothers... Hey, you, uh, you better go into second gear on this road. Okay, right. Why, hard luck was the only person known to have been there with him. Couple that with the fact he just got 60,000 bucks from them to reopen the mine. Well, that mine's worthless, Johnny. Yeah, so I understand. Anyhow, naturally enough, everybody decided hard luck had done it. You know, before the brothers could get wise to him. He's a funny old character. Pretty nervous when I saw him. He almost took a shot at me a couple of times when he didn't like something I said. But instead, he got it. Yeah. While he was just prospecting, he was all right. Managed to get enough out of the ground here and there to live on. Some left over for a Saturday night binge down in. Hey, you see the workings up ahead? Right. But when he couldn't seem to make a big strike like every prospector tries for... That's well, when he tried finding suckers for some of his fancy promotions, huh? Yeah. But he really wasn't very good at it. He threw him out of the Texas oil country, you know. Yeah, so I heard. Well, so that's the Midas touch. Not too many of this kind of mine anymore with the entrance going into the hillside this way. You know, I better use this flashlight. Okay. Hey, tell me something, Buster. If this mine is worthless, how could hard luck get the Haskell brothers to chip off chunks of ore that assayed over $1,000 a ton? Well, I got kind of a theory about that. Let's see if I'm right. Everything's so covered up with dust down here, not having been worked for years, it ought to be easy to see where they knocked off chips for a sample to take back. Well, 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 what are you doing down here? Holy smoke, that's a rattler. Yeah. I guess he decided to get in out of the hot sun out there. Well, here, I'll find a big rock or something. No, no, you just wait. Handle to this old pick here. If I can get him to strike at it, maybe I can grab him by the tail and... Watch it! And crack him like a whip! Oh, so help me, Buster. Sometimes you do it right, you can snap their heads right off. Got to be careful, though, not to snap that head against your own self. Brother, yeah, I I see what you mean. No chance of somebody having planted that snake down here, is there? You mean like the scorpion in the monument? Huh? You know, those little neat piles of rock you see here, there in the desert, two, three feet high. I thought those were where some prospector had staked a claim. Markers. Yeah, they are. Monuments, they call them. In the old days, they always did it the same way. How is that? Well, I'd pull a couple of stones away, you'd find an old Prince Albert tobacco tin. You open the tin, you'd find two things in it. A piece of paper describing and marking off the claim, and a scorpion. 
Alive? As long as he stayed alive. That meant stay away. No trespassing. This is mine. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. Now, look here. Here, Johnny, on this pillar. That was the pillar that was left by digging around it to hold up the ceiling. Oh? You see where some of it was knocked off with a pick? Yeah, I... Hey, wait a minute, Buster. That looks like yellow. That looks like gold. That's what it is. Then this mine is rich. No, Johnny. You mean the only gold ore left down here is in these pillars? That's right. And without them, the roof would cave in. Well, couldn't it, couldn't it be shored up with wood? Why? Only two, three, four of these are left down here. Probably not more than a ton in all. Not worth it. Oh, yeah, I see. But worth using it to bring in the suckers. Huh? Yeah. Well, now you want to see how the cave-in on the Haskell. Now, what in the Sam Hill is this doing down here? This winch and length of wire rope. Isn't that the answer to the cave-in? Tad Harding over at headquarters in Kingman seemed to think so. Yeah, sure, somebody used it to pull down one of the pillars. But Johnny, a winch of this type hadn't got any place in the mine. Where would a rig like this be used? Well, every ranch in this whole area probably has a couple. Cattle ranch? Yeah, that's right. Hmm, that gives me an idea. About who did it? At least it gives me a lead to an idea. Or at least the kind of questions to ask hard luck Dennis. Well, I thought you said he was still unconscious. Yeah, yeah, so I'll have to wait. Well, let's get out of here. Well, what do you plan to do now? Oh, just wait, I guess. And do some fishing while I wait. Oh, now that's right down my alley. Only first I'm going to knock off a bit of this ore for a souvenir. Yeah, this old pick ought to do. Well, now, take it easy, John. I, I said take it easy. Come on. Come on. Now, Johnny, you should know him better than that. Here, let me help you out of this pile of rubble. My face was pretty red as we drove back to Lake Mojave. Only once did Buster mention the fool thing I'd done. Yes, sir. If you'd banged away at one of the pillars further in the shaft, we'd have been in real trouble. Probably ended up like the Haskell brothers. And I suppose instead of planning on going fishing, I should have been cooking up some new angle of attack on this case. But after all, I had been promised fishing time on this trip. And until hard luck Dennis could recover enough to talk... I got the boat all ready and waiting for us, Johnny, with the 30 horse Johnson outboard on it. Oh, boy, I can't wait. And I'll take you to spots I know where you can pull out the biggest fightingest bass you ever saw. Oh, Buster, you son of a gun, you're tempting me with something I can't resist. I'll even loan you my bottle of Fast Strike. Fast Strike? Yeah, lure oil. A little dab of that on your bait will guarantee you fish. That's for me. Uh, you, um... You sure you wouldn't rather just sit and try to figure out some new lead on this insurance case? You want my answer? Here. But, as luck would have it, Ham Pratt was standing down by the dock waiting for us with a message for me. Call Kingman Operator number 37. I made the call. This is Jake Kessler, Johnny. How's the fishing? Well, if it wasn't for the message from you, I'd be out on Lake Mojave right now. So if that's all you want to know... Johnny. I'm... Yeah? I put in this call to you over two hours ago, when Hard Luck Dennis first came to. He has? Yes. The doc says he's going to be okay. Has he told you anything about who shot him up? No. He won't talk to anybody but you. Says you're his only friend. Okay, Jake, I'm on my way. In a half hour flat, I was back in Kingman at the Mercy Hospital on the edge of town. Hello, hard luck. Johnny. Johnny Dollar. That's right. Glad. Glad you came. Only one I trust. Not like people around town. They hate me. Wow. Knew he'd tried to get me, Johnny. Who? Probably seen me going back to the mine. Knew I'd recognize that winch he left there. The winch that was used to pull down the mine pillar caused the cave-in? That's right. A lot of winches like that on the ranches. But only Alex. Only he used that particular make. Royal standard. Alex who, Hardluck? Bundy. Alex Bundy. Alex Bundy. Foreman at the Haskell's ranch? The Too Lazy Two? Yes, Alex. But why? In love. Kevin Haskell's wife, Dora. Okay. Okay. Will you tell the police, the court, all this when the time comes? If you say so. 
If I live. Ah, oh, you'll live all right. The doctor says you're going to be fine. You're going to be okay. Now, is there anything you want? Anything I can have sent up here to make you more comfortable? No, thanks, Johnny. Just come and see me, will you? Sure. Thanks. Uh, I guess you're the only real friend I have. Just why he felt that way, I don't know. Perhaps it was because he needed a friend. I decided I'd better let Jake Kessler in on what I'd learned and incidentally ask him for directions to the two lazy two, so I drove on over to his little second-floor office on East Palm Drive. Alex Bundy, huh? Yeah, that's what Hardluck says. And with his testimony to back me up when I find Alex, you'll... Well, we'll have a case, a good case. Which means, by the way, that your company won't have to pay off an additional million and a half for double... What's the matter? Shh, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, Jake, um, I'm going on over and do a bit of fishing in Lake Mojave. What under the sun Buster you... Favor promises to get me a limit of the finest bass you... What is it, Johnny? What are you doing? Somebody was outside that door listening to us. I'm sure of it. Well, who... Here, look, there he is, going down the street. Recognize him, Jake? Where, Johnny? Ah, Where? It's too late. He got around the corner. But if it's who I think it is, yeah, he must have heard all that was said in here. Alex Bundy, huh? What's your guess? I've been thinking, Johnny. Yeah? Old hard luck Dennis has been the key to this whole case right from the first. He still is, more than ever after what he told me. All right, then. I'm... Uh, excuse me. Jake Kessler speaking. Oh, hello, Chief. I was just... Huh? What? Oh. What's the matter, Jake? What's the matter? You look like you've seen a ghost. I was Tad Harding at headquarters. A fire escape outside the room at the hospital. Huh? Somebody climbed up the fire escape, used a bailing hook. Oh. Yeah. He's dead now. Hard luck. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, the case is closed. And then it suddenly reopens with a bang from a .30-06 rifle. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.